Hello, hello, Crystal here. Welcome to another video with the Intact of Immersive HQ. And this video, I'm going to show you this simple notch tutorial. It is very beginner friendly. We're not going to use too many nodes. It'll be quick, uh, but we'll go over a few different post effect nodes and we can see how we can really add these to spice up a project. I'm excited to share with you. It's quite scalable. I'll show you different ways to make it your own and make it very unique from doing different colors to playing with a different parameter. So let's begin. But as always, we'll start. So as always, we'll start with a blank project. And when you open Notch, you automatically have this root output. And can we add a render to texture? Yeah. And note that there is a render to texture and there is a render layer there's a few different renders and it looks the same so make sure you have the right one and where you can also check is when you click on the node it says appear render to texture so we want the render to texture node and i'm going to root this in and i'm going to copy and paste this i can connect the render to texture to render to texture so we have two of these next we'll add a image 2d And in this image 2D, we're gonna connect this to the root. Control R is a shortcut for that. And then we're gonna have a video null. We're gonna connect the video null not to the root, but to the second render to texture. So don't just do Control R because that will automatically connect to the, the root and we don't want that we want to render texture cool and this video null i'm going to hook it to the image 2d so it has this kind of loop effect so it's render to texture to render to texture to video null back to image 2d which is connected to to the root here's a little bit cleaner visual of that great Next, we'll have a regular null and connect this to the first render to texture. And I will have a shape 3D. Shape 3D, I'll hook with null. And I want a sphere correct. The radius, I'm going to make it to 7. And I'll keep the subdivision to 20 and 20. After this, I don't see it yet. We We'll get there in a sec, but just trust blindly that <laughs> something's happening. <laughs> Next, we're going to do a slice deformer. Have that on the sphere. I'm actually going to move this piece a little bit more over here. So, slice deformer, we're going to play around with some of these parameters later, but. Uh, we'll just do that for now, and we'll add a frame feedback. Close it back. So it's an under blur. And I'm add that to the null. Let's go play and start seeing something. So I see the sphere. So you can also in the slice deformer now you can start like playing. It's like oh, what happens if I change this parameter for slice thickness? for um, the slice scale. So I want to actually tilt this rotation to something like 65 degrees. That's nice. And I want this to be constantly moving. So kind of similar to a apps time dot frame in touch designer, uh, there is this continuous modifier where it just keeps on going up. So oh, I will just hook this into the Y. And if I play this, it can just be, it says, oops, this is wrong. Uh, In condition modifier, I want continuous modifier. So, because then 
it has a speed option, then I'll hook this into the Y. So it should just start counting up. And you can play with the speed number where you can do like two, which is like higher, just how many times more you want. But I'll just keep it one. Another another uh, parameter I want to change is this shape 3D. And I want to change the rotation pitch so it's like constantly moving in a circle. So again, I'll hook this to the ro uh, rotation pitch. So it's slow, but slowly moves, and this will be cool and trippy for what we're going to use this for. So now I'm going to add a curl noise, close effect, wrap, curl noise wrap onto the frame feedback. We start seeing some like things happening here. And if it's kind of glitching a lot, no worries. We're going to add a little more post effects, and that should kind of get rid of it. But for this, uh, this frame feedback, I'm going to inc decrease, increase, increase this previous frame and also zoom in frame. And this ghost off X, I'm going to increase this too. You kind of play around with the number you want. The slice of form, I'm going to keep the slice scale lower. Cool. It's curl noise. I'm going to also play with the displacement. I'm going to increase this displacement and lower the scale by 0.6. And edge fade also, I will make it to be like 0.3. No, the displacement is like point eight. Okay, cool. We're starting to see stuff. You see the feedback. It's like flat, not happy, glitching and stuff. So I'm gonna pause this for now, uh, and we're gonna add some post effects that will kind of help. So I'll first add a film rating. Connect that to the null. And note that in a notch is similar to where a maximum keyword, the order matters. So having whatever is lower on this will be over the priority. So it's kind of more noticeable for post effects where you're going to, we're going to add a few. And if you notice, if you like raise one node or decrease a node, it will affect the, the visuals and stuff. So this film, a uh, film grading, I'm going to have the blur amount higher to something like one. I can actually play it so we can see it real time. And so this is also, if you ever want to see what is it doing, you can do control one, turn on and off a per a node. So a uh, blur amount increased to one and blur scale, I'm going to decrease it to something like 0.36. And then the vignettes width, I'm gonna also increase that up. Next, I'm gonna add a color correcting correction. I'm gonna connect that to the null. And on this one, I'm going to change a little a few different things. And this is also your own project, so play with these different values as you see fit. So I'm going to put brightness up. I'm going to have saturation. I'll play with the saturation hue in a little bit after I play with the color. So I want it to have a little bit less red, the red high to just change it up to something that I find interesting. Mid -tone. like two different sections of colors is interesting you can also play with a shadow you can increase the sat play with the saturation and the different hues cool and yeah also the feedback what would be now, if I increase it, yeah, like what will happen? Play with these different numbers of like. Okay. 
And also, what is it? How is it when I have the film grading on the bottom and color on top? I kind of actually like it having the grading after. Cool. And then I will add a half tone. Half tone, I'm going to change this to be additive. And I'm going to increase this max point in the max scale. Yeah, after I add the half tone, it got rid of the glitching effect. To be honest, I'm not a notch expert. I don't know how that did it or why it did it glitch at the beginning, but it's gone. <laughs> and then I'm going to add a glow, finally. And once you hook up glow, you're like, whoa, this is a lot. <laughs> We're going to increase this blending amount by quite a bit. And I always like, just recommend just exploring, like, what is this blending additive? How is it different from solid? How is it different from light? I kind of like this. Actually, that was pre multiply blend. How about light? Uh, what it was was additive. So choose what you think is C fit. Screen is also pretty cool. You can do control one to see how it is with or without it. Again. And you can increase the scale. I'm going to see if I have it. Double the blur scale and lower the softening. Awesome. And you can play with more of doing the continuous modifiers. What if you have uh, the bank also be spinning too? Like, I can just connect this to rotation bank. And if it changes more over time, how is it different? from having the half tone after the glow to do anything. Actually, I feel like I want this half tone a bit higher. Points. Yes, feedback can be even higher. Ooh, trippier, trippier. Let's have it. As I said, this is like a pretty scalable project where you can really make it your own. You can add different cameras where you can even have the camera be rotating around it. Um, add lighting if you want. Uh, play with this continuous modifier. And how fun would it be of making it interactive where somebody can change the speed of this or the slice number these are just throwing different ideas of how you can make this more scalable and make this project your own. Pretty much it. A quick little tutorial on Notch. I'm excited uh, that I got to share this with you. If you want more Notch content, please let me know. If you want to see how to have this more into Touch Designer and having the Notch to Touch Designer uh, workflow. And as always, it was a pleasure to share this and um, feel free to tag us on what you think. Have a great day. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.